Hey guys, Dylan from Nova Records, coming at you with another video. A uh, question I get all the time is uh, recommendations for like, if you're a new collector and you've already got your basic stuff like Michael Jackson, Thriller, uh, Pink Floyd, The Wall, Dark Side of the Moon, Led Zeppelin IV, all that stuff. If you've already got all that stuff but you want to get a little bit deeper than the radio, uh, what are some albums you'd recommend? So I put together a list of 20 albums that I would highly recommend if you want to get a little bit deeper. I kind of, uh, there's no order to them, there's no numbers to them, and it's not a definitive list. Don't get offended if I don't put in a record that you thought should have been on here. This is just my recommendations personally. Um, another resource I'll give you is there's a book called 1001 Albums to Listen to Before You Die. It's an incredible book. It's cheap. You can get it online used probably for like seven bucks. Um, I, I've given away so many copies of that book. It's incredible. But there's also a list, and I'll put that in a link in the description of this video, a list where you can find those 1001 albums and you can listen to them. It starts from 1954 or something like that up into present day. It's great. Uh, so that's a great list. Second one is Rock, the Rolling Stones' top 500 albums of all time. That's a great list to get to, but there's a lot of common stuff on it. But the 1,001 albums are here before you die. There's common stuff, but there's also a little bit deeper stuff that you really need to know. So these are the top 20 for me that I would recommend if you're just getting into a little bit deeper stuff. Uh, number one, this is one of my absolute favorite albums. I didn't know this album in high school, and when I got to be a little bit older, I discovered this album. I bought it at a yard sale. I had seen the cover, but I didn't know what it was. Uh, this is King Crimson and the Court of the Crimson King. Now, this is an original master recording. It's kind of a rare pressing of its audio file. It sounds really good. Uh, but this is just an album that is uh, an incredible uh, record. It, it, it ventures a little bit into Prague. So if you like the band Yes, Genesis, stuff like that, this is kind of that same lane. Uh, but it's a little bit more fuzzed out. Um, really great stuff. The the Court of the Crimson King and 24, 21st Century Schizoid Man, those two songs in here dynamite really good stuff um uh there's some weird stuff on here but this is gonna definitely bend your mind a little bit definitely didn't play this on the radio but really good stuff um these i'm showing now are kind of more rock suggestions and i'll i'll get more into funk and blues and all that stuff too so this is um blue cheer vincibus eruptum this is one of the first albums that i got that was really good it sounds like classic rock it is classic rock uh but it's just something that you didn't really hear a lot uh that the song summertime blues uh, that's on here. If you know that song, that's probably been on the radio. But this is um, kind of blues rock. It ventures a little bit into psych. So if you're wanting to get into that, this Blue Cheer, Vincibus Eruptum, you can find this record for under 20 bucks, probably 15 And um, it's a really great starter to kind of get you something a little bit different. But amazing stuff. And Blue Cheer has a lot of other really good albums too. Uh, this one's, you know, you know Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. This is Stephen Stills' Manassas. A uh, really great um, group of players on here. Uh, if you like good songwriting, uh, you like Americana type stuff, this is a Dynamite album that not a lot of people talk about. It's a little bit under the surface, but uh, this is a really great album. I would highly recommend anybody that comes in and asks me, you know, what's a rock album or a, uh, that you know you might not hear a lot of that nobody talks about that you'd recommend. This is one that. Cannot praise this album enough. It's a really, really good one. And it's, you know, eight bucks, ten bucks tops. Uh, this is another one that's a little bit more expensive, but you can get a really good reissue. Um, and I would, uh, this is a Funkadelic Maggot Brain. Uh, as far as funk albums go, this is the quintessential, my highest recommended funk album you can get. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and the original pressings are usually about a hundred bucks, maybe a little bit more. This is an original press. Um, you can get a reissue now. Uh, there's a couple of really good reissues out there. There's one label, it's called Four Men With Beards. They have a reissue of this, and it's really awful. Don't buy that. Uh, but pretty much any other reissue, I'd highly recommend just getting one. You know, you can get them for like 16 to 20 bucks online or at your local record store. Uh, but Funkadelic Maggot Brain, it's got some really great guitar looks on it. If you're a guitar player, you're going to love this album. Um, but it's also just crazy good funk, you know. And the Funkadelic had a bunch of other good albums. Uh, Parliament had a bunch of good albums. Same group of dudes. But you got to check that out. Funkadelic Maggot Brain. Uh, this is one that I actually was going to make this video last night, but I forgot this one. I have a record shop. Forgot it at the shop and ended up having to do it tonight because I was like, I can't have this video without this record. It's that important. Uh, this is Herbie Hancock, Headhunters. Uh, this is a quadraphonic pressing, um, but this is a uh, fantastic album. 
um, it's instrumental, but just some great grooves. It, it kind of, um, if you're not used to listening to really far out there stuff, it'll bend your mind a little bit, but not enough to where it's going to freak you out. Um, I was recently on a trip uh, doing a bunch of videos in New York City with a guy that's about in his early 20s, and he doesn't listen to stuff like this ever. And I put it on, and he was like, man, this is weird. What is this? This is weird. And uh, we were listening to it and listening to it and kind of grooving to it, and he, I could tell he was kind of getting into it. And then like, we went to this record store like the next day, and it was playing, and he was like, all right, all right. He was hearing it. He was enjoying it. And uh, when we got back, he's like, well, what's the name of that album, dude? That's killer. And yeah, it's Herbie Hancock, Headhunters. But uh, if you like funk, if you like, um, there's great guitar stuff on here. The band that he put together for this album is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, this is the one, one that I never knew when I was young, and I wish I did, because it would have highly influenced the way I play guitar. So Herbie Hancock, Headhunters, amazing. Uh, the next one, this is another one. A lot of these... Pretty much the way I made this list was stuff that I wish I had known about in high school, but I didn't. Um, this one is Superfly by Curtis Mayfield. It's actually a soundtrack, but it's absolutely amazing. Uh, Curtis Mayfield is a phenomenal composer and musician. He's, his, his whole catalog is unbelievable. But uh, Superfly is the pinnacle for me. It's a really great album. Uh, there's there's all these uh, you know African-American action movies uh in the 70s and this is just like the the quintessential one is the you know but this album like and a lot of the soundtracks if you see any of those soundtracks they're all great um dennis coffee is a is a guitar player who plays on a lot of them if you can find that stuff it's all really good but this is gonna um right now i'm going through kind of like funk and soul and stuff like that that you got to have but this super fly soundtrack is is great through and through it's just phenomenal stuff and if you want to venture into like uh, funk. This is a great funk album. Uh, it's a little bit different uh, than Funkadelic Maggot Brands. A little bit more out there, but this is also just like really good, solid funk music. That's just like you just groove to it. It's killer. Um, Otis Blue by Otis Redding. Um, yeah, when I was younger, I didn't know much about Otis Redding. I, I knew uh, sitting on the dock of the bay, and that was it. Uh, but this album is absolutely phenomenal. It's a mind blower. And this is, a, this is a really nice original pressing of it. It took me a long time to find an original pressing of it that's affordable uh, because they're crazy expensive. But you can get really good reissues of this now. Um, and, you know, I think an original pressing is like 40 bucks, something like that, maybe 50 But, um, yeah, this one's a great soul album. Otis Redding's one of my favorite soul singers of all time, and this album is about as good as it gets for me. If you really like that, just great quality just soul ballads this is this is one that, that you're gonna want to you might not have heard of but you want to um this is green onions by uh, booker t and the mgs we talk about instrumental soul stuff on uh, like stacks type stuff this is this is it for me this is the album my go-to album when i first heard this album um i was like oh man i know that i've heard that before and like a lot of the tracks on here you've heard either in movies or um, like people sample them on, on like hip hop tracks and stuff like that. Like this is just one of those albums that is just bare roots, uh, instrumental stuff that's really gonna. It's it's got some vibe to it. It's got some groove to it. But this Booker T and the MGs, all Booker T and the MG stuff is great. But Green Onions is the pinnacle for me. It's really really great, and you gotta find this album. Now we're gonna go a little bit more into psychedelic territory. Not too, not not too crazy. No, this isn't like advanced. This is intermediate. Uh, but the first one that I really got turned on to, this is more on the garage psych side of things. Was Thirteen Floor Elevators, um, and this is an album called The Psychedelic Sounds of the Thirteen Floor Elevators. This is a really expensive album. The first pressing, and this is uh, this is an original mono pressing of this. So this was one of the really rare ones. It took me years to track one down. You can get a reissue for 16, 18, 20 bucks maybe. Um, and they're everywhere. They're, they're easy to find. Most record stores are going to have a reissue of this. Uh, but 13th Floor Elevators, just really good quality psych stuff. And it's like upbeat. It's hard, heavy, but also like a little bit of the garage side too. But this is, when I think about when psych was really getting a start, this is not too far out there, but this is really good, 
quality early psych 1966 just um this is gonna be if you're wanting to ease your way into psych find a reissue of this don't spend all your money because the original pressing is going to be 300 bucks uh, but but you can easily get a reissue, like I said, and just kind of start grooving to some psych. This is one that kind of opened my mind up. I was like, oh man, I really like psychedelic music, and I just, it's a bottomless pit now. That's all I want to listen to. Um, so another one, if you want more like of a pop psych feel, this is probably my number one favorite album of all time. I say Led Zeppelin 3 is because I have to. Led Zeppelin 3, if you're watching this, don't get offended. We have that bond still. But this is uh, the Zombies Odyssey and Oracle. It's so good. Uh, the first time I heard this, I was like blown away. If you like Be Beach Boys Pet Sounds, this is kind of in that same lane, if I'm being honest. It's not too psychedelic. The cover is more psychedelic than the music is. But this is a great album that I never knew when I was young. I uh, heard it for the first time when I was like 21 or 22. And I was like, where has this been my whole life? Uh, great album, but it's the pop psych. So it's, a little, it's more poppy than anything. But it's really, really, really great stuff. Uh, you've heard um, Time of the Season. The time of the season. You know that song. But this whole album, every single track, from start to finish, I love it like it was my own child. You gotta have that. Zombies. I see more cool. This one, Love Forever Changes. Now, this is another original master recording like I was talking about. Love is one of my absolute favorite psych bands. Um, for whatever reason, when I was young, I heard about them here and there, but never really got into them. I never found their records. They weren't cheap, and I just didn't see them in thrift stores, so I never got into them. But I knew that I should, and when I did, holy moly, they're one of my favorite bands now. Unbelievable stuff. Great. Uh, this Forever Changes is an album that I cannot imagine anyone not absolutely loving. It is more on the pop psych side, but it's a little bit harder than Odyssey and Oracle. So this is right in the middle lane like very palatable uh if you're not used to psych and you're a little bit scared of listening to really weird music like a bunch of hippies sitting around smoking opium that's not this this is really good quality psych that even you could listen to with your mom and she'd probably like it but it's still really good stuff you don't see this that often out and about in the wild and you might not have heard of it but that's really great love forever changes amazing album now we're going to get into uh, a few like singer-songwriter, Americana type stuff. Um, this is an album that I saw when I was young and I thought it was stupid. And then I listened to it and I was like, Joni Mitchell Blue. Um, Joni Mitchell is amazing. She's a phenomenal songwriter. But this album, if you haven't heard it, don't just think, oh, this is, uh, you know, 70s pop. This is one of my absolute favorite albums. Um... I, it blows my mind now. She's such a phenomenal songwriter. The way that she writes music is just unbelievable. But uh, this is my favorite Joni Mitchell album. Clouds is also a very good one. But um, if you don't have this album, really do everything you can to find one because they're not expensive. This is a UK pressing, but US pressings are under 20 bucks. But I'm telling you, uh, if you really like songwriter, singer-songwriter stuff... This is the beginning. This is like the beginning of really, really good quality, well-produced singer-songwriter singer stuff. But it's on Reprise Records. I cannot praise this record enough. It's just, it's it's become one of my favorites. Um, as I've, write, I've written my own songs, I kind of look at other songwriters and try to like glean th things from them. The way she writes songs blow my, blows my mind. My brain would just never work that way. And that's what makes for a really great album. But um Highly recommend this. You might listen to it once and kind of not get it. That's it's kind of one of those, but listen to it a couple times. I guarantee you, it will become one of your favorites. This one is just really good. Uh, Nick Drake, Pink Moon. I never heard of Nick Drake when I was young, uh, but this is if you like emo music, if you like um, uh, Elliot Smith type stuff. I often say I hear a lot of. Uh, Nick Drake and Elliot Smith and Sufjan Stevens. Uh, Nick Drake is just the beginning of the sad singer-songwriter type guy. Unbelievable stuff. Way underrated in his time. Uh, he never really made it big, but his albums are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, this is one, Pink Moon, if you're worried about original press and stuff. This is a first U.S. press. Um, and I think it was 1976-ish. Um, but the original U.K.'s 
are um, extremely rare and worth uh, $800. I don't know, a lot. Uh, don't be afraid to just grab a reissue of this. 20 bucks reissue done. This album is another one I can't imagine anyone not liking, and it is absolutely incredible the way this guy plays and sings. It was, you you would think, like, I showed my wife this album. I was like, when do you think this is from? And she would not heard it, and she's like, I don't know, probably past 10 years. And I'm like, nah, you know, 1972. You know, this is unbelievable stuff, guys. Really check this out if you haven't heard it. Um, this is another one. I don't know why more people don't listen to Towns Van Zandt. But I'm telling you, Towns Van Zandt, if you like country, you'll like him. If you like singer-songwriter, you'll like him. If you like Americana, you'll like him. If you like Britney Spears, you'll like him. It doesn't matter. You're going to love Towns Van Zandt. Um, in my opinion, this is the best songwriter that's ever lived. Fight me. I don't care. Towns Van Zandt is absolutely incredible. Way underrated. I heard his first album a long time ago. Didn't really get it. And then I listened to this. This is his... Um, self-titled uh this is actually the reissue i have an original somewhere but uh yeah the original pressings of this are about 300 bucks you can get a reissue for 20 actually you can get it for like 15 they've uh, recently um started reissuing them on fat possum records and you can get them for like 15 bucks they're great reissues i highly recommend getting them all of towns van Sant stuff is really phenomenal but this album is um just mainly just him and his guitar and his songs are, are kind of stripped down and raw and just amazing songwriting on here. So Towns Van Zandt, self-titled, 1969. Amazing stuff. Now we're going to go into just a few, like, um, hard rock slash proto-punk stuff. So this, the Stooges, um, this is high-energy rock and roll, late 60s. This is 1969. Um, amazing, amazing album. Um, this is their original U.S. press without the without their name on it, um, so it's kind of a rare one. But this is one of my absolute favorite albums. If you like that high energy rock and roll that just gets your blood pumping, this is it. The Stooges, amazing stuff. This was this they call it proto punk. It, it was the there would be no punk without this. This was the uh, primer for punk to come in. So this was this is just amazing stuff. It's not punk. I want to make that clear. If you don't like punk, you will still like this. It's not punk. But this is the roots. Just like blues is the roots of rock and roll. Blues is not rock and roll. But it's the man. So, highly recommend that. Television, Marquee Moon. Holy moly. If you're a guitar player, you're going to love this record. Um, if you're not really quite sure about punk, if it's a little aggressive and it scares you a little bit, it's okay. you got to have albums like this to kind of ease you into it to help you acquire the taste. Television Marquee Moon is one that it is a little bit on the alternative side, a little bit on the, you know, if you like New Wave and you like punk and you like, this is just a, one of these perfect albums. It's great stuff, classic, classic album, great guitar work on here. Television Marquee Moon is one of my favorite records. It's really good, but it's gonna prime you if, if you're not really sure about punk. If it's a little aggressive for you, this is something that will kind of say, hey, come on, the water's fine. Next one, if we're talking about, we're talking about jazz. What album do you think I'm gonna show? If you're not into jazz and you're like, well, how do I get in? This album is how you get into jazz. Miles Davis, Kind of Blue, this is an original stereo. I'll just show you the six because how can you not? Um, this is a great album and I'll tell you why, the lineup. Yeah, Cannibal Adderley, Paul Chambers, James Cobb, John Coltrane, Bill Evans, Wynton Kelly. This is a great lineup of jazz musicians. Now, jazz albums, a lot of the times, um, you got to look at the lineup and see what you like. Now, I'll tell you right quick what I like about this album. You got John Coltrane on it. John Coltrane's my favorite jazz musician. Um, Bill Evans is one of my favorite piano players of all time. He's an incredible piano player. Um, Cannonball Adderley, phenomenal, but, but Miles Davis, he's just, um, throughout his career, he did so many great things and made so many great albums. And this is just perfect hard bop jazz, great stuff. This is one that I really cannot imagine anyone not liking. So this is going to be your best friend if you're just getting into jazz and you, you don't know what to listen to. All the guys on this lineup, they have their own albums and they're all great. So that'll kind of get you into all of them. Uh, 
John Coltrane. I love Supreme. This is a great album. Um, they they call this spiritual jazz. You know, it's just it's so good. Uh, John Coltrane, like I said, he, he's he's my favorite jazz musician of all time. Uh, he had just such a perfect improvisation. It was unbelievable. People said that he had a connection to God and God would just feed him the music. That's how good it was. Um, but J John Coltrane's amazing, but I Love Supreme is just one of those absolutely perfect albums. If you don't know this album and you're trying to get into jazz, this is one that's absolute must that you own this. It's, I cannot t talk about this enough. It's amazing. So, last two, and I'm thinking to myself, what blues albums should I show you guys to get into? Some of my favorite blues guys are Muddy Waters' is Top, number one, Lightning Hopkins, Howling Wolf, um, John Lee Hooker. Those are my favorite, favorite blues guys. But you're talking about guys that, you know, you got to have that are essential that's going to get you into that genre. Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson is the classic uh, blues guy. He's king of the Delta Blues as it says. Uh, but this album has been reissued a bunch of times. The original pressings are hard to find. This is a, some sort of reissue. I think it's a 70s reissue or something like that. Uh, so don't shame yourself. Just get whatever you can get. But this is um, just one of those really great albums. It's early, early blues. And every every track on it is just good. It's raw. It's dirty. You know, Robert Johnson, if you don't know, he's the one that uh, he couldn't play guitar. He wanted to really bad. He went away. He came back just a couple months later and he could play guitar and no one knew how he did it. And the folklore says that he sold his soul to the devil to touch him how to play guitar. And that was the beginning of blues. You know, that's the story. That's not what really happened, but that's the, that's the folklore. Uh, but Robert Johnson, he ended up uh, getting poisoned in a bar. Somebody poisoned him. Like that's just blues, man. Dripping with blues. But if you want to get into blues, Robert Johnson was a great, great gateway. And then our last album, this is one that is, and I'll just preface it by saying a lot of people know this album because Jack White talks about it a lot. Uh, this was Jack White's connection with the blues, was getting in a sun house. This doesn't sound like Jack White, don't think that. But this is just raw, real blues. Sun House is an incredible blues artist. He's somebody that, you know, he went to prison, he became a pastor, all that stuff. Like, he, he's just... Uh, what blues is all about. He kind of faded out, and then uh, in the 60s, uh, some guys that were in a band called Candy Heat kind of looked him back up and got him back into blues, and he did blues again as an old man. But uh, Sunhouse is just, it's just, uh, it's everything blues is about. You gotta know Sunhouse, and it's not that common. Uh, I'd never heard of it when I was in high school, and I was really into blues, I liked it, but I just never saw his records, and I never got into it. You can get reissues of this, it's a $20 record, but this is one that I highly recommend you getting your hands on or at least streaming it or something. But this is just um, everything that's good about blues is Sunhouse. So that was my 20. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are able to find some of those records if you haven't heard them before. Like I said you know, before, there's no shame in streaming it until you get the copies. I stream records all the time before I buy them. There's no shame in that. Um, also, no shame in getting a reissue. There's a lot of albums I have reissues of. Um, and then when later on when you get down the road and, and you find a, that diamond in the rough at the flea market and you get an original or you're willing to pay it for something once you know you really like it, then get an original. But when you're just getting into it and you're just starting your collection, don't let snobby collectors tell you you got to have a first pressing. Don't let snobby collectors tell you you can't stream it first. It's all about the music and you enjoying the music and you getting into the things that you really like and venturing into new waters. If you want to get into punk, those are some albums that will help you get into punk. And this, notice I didn't, I didn't show any hip hop albums. I didn't show anything past like 1980 because all this stuff is the roots music that's going to carry you into that stuff. You know, all the funk and the soul, those were used as samples and break beats for hip hop, all that stuff. So once you get into this stuff, then like maybe I'll make another hip hop recommendations or whatever. I like all types of music, but this is what's going to get you into the other things. Hope you guys like this video. Check out the links in the description to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Subscribe to this video if you liked it. Hope you guys are doing well. We'll see you next time.